Hi, I'm CJ, and this is my ambulance. It's a 2004 Sprinter. Um, it's the 416 with the 2.7 litre engine. It was a private uh, ambulance service that was selling it because the tail lift broke and um, they were just going to scrap it. So for £2,500, I got myself an ambulance. This is Lance, um, my little 10 month old puppy. He's Great little companion to have, but as you can see, he's a bit excitable at times. <laughs> Gotta keep him inside so he doesn't run off in the street. So the paint job, uh, it come ambulance yellow with all the stickers on, and it took me approximately about a month to get them all off because it was they were just really on there. And then I thought the bodywork isn't particularly great to start with, so I'm just gonna hand roller it. So I got some military paint, battleship grey, and just went for it. So up on the roof, I've got my uh, solar panel, uh, the solar water heater, my bike that I haven't actually took down yet, so it's going pretty rusty, and the uh, chimney. So this is my battery tray. Where the original batteries were for the ambulance, I've just put my leisure batteries in. So you've got these two here connected together. That does the inverter and all the 240 stuff. And then my big one here does um, all the 12 volt lights and all that kind of thing. It also goes to the spit charger underneath the passenger seat and the alternator charges stuff up um, when it's running and the solar panel does everything else when it stops. So I installed my shower, a um, bit of a mod con really and now I've used it I've realised that it's not really necessary. If I have a 10 minute shower half my tank's empty so I tend to you know, go to the gyms or stuff like that to use my shower. This is the main part of the shower, it's um, run by gas, we've got the gas pipe in here, uh, water in and then water out and that goes round to the, the tap in the sink and then that goes up to the, the shower itself. Okay, it's coming in. So this is the inside of the shower. Um, I call it my shoilet because you can have a shower and go to the toilet at the same time. Um, this started life as the spinal board uh, cupboard. I just extended it. And I've got my four burner hobbles here and then below is my wine rack fridge which I very rarely actually turn on it stays really nice and cold in there. Uh, here we've got my extinguisher just in case and the more important emergency JD and coke for them uh, really bad days out on the road. So my door started life as a window it was about this big and um, just uh, imagine so they the two staff can talk to each other so I got my angle grinder out and cut right down to the floor and then fitted a, a sliding door in. It's, uh, it's pretty small uh, a guy my size can just about get through it. Uh, up here is my control panel, or one of them. Uh, it does uh, the speaker mute, door locks, aircon, diesel heater. Uh, this used to have a special digital clock, but they were worth a fortune out of ambulances, so I sold that on to make some money. Okay, so all along the side wall, this is all pretty much original. Um, it just had a, a good old dousing with bleach to clean it all out and stuff. And then they got wrapped in, in vinyl um, to turn them black. And then worktops built the sink into one of the cupboards and that was pretty much it really put some shelves in and they were good to go so I've got my TV here again it's another mod con it's something I didn't really need um, when I'm off in the wilderness off grid I just use my laptop because the batteries on the 240 volt drain way too fast uh, but if I'm at a campsite it's a nice little addition to have watch my movies like I'm just at home you are at home yeah I am at home yeah <laughs> Uh, this is my tiny little log burner. Um, I absolutely love this thing, it's brilliant. The van came with a diesel heater, but I really rarely use it because this thing just uh, heats the van up straight away. It's a nice, you know, dry heat. Uh, to mount it, I, I was really worried about um, yeah, heat damage or burning stuff. So I got some nice thick aluminium on the bottom to protect all the bits that drop out or if the heat gets down. Uh, along the back wall, it's spaced off a couple of mil. Get my fingers behind there. And that creates some ventilation and again dissipates through the aluminium and as it comes up top there's a really thick bit and it goes into um, like a, a wrap that you put on exhaust a heat shield wrap and that takes it outside the van then and then it goes into a, a cowling and out the chimney uh, for safety I've got a carbon monoxide by the shower so that kind of does the whole cooker log burner and the shower um, I know a lot of you will be going mm, well you're supposed to be putting it down on the floor because that's where carbon monoxide goes but this room is so small, it really doesn't matter. Um, most manufacturers of camper vans put them up on the ceiling next to your, your fire extinguisher. So the bed itself uh, is my sofa. It's like an L shape and then this pulls out, um, shift the cushions around to fit in the, the gaps 
and that makes it my double-ish bed. Floor is probably my biggest mistake in the van. Um, I used uh, just your standard house laminate floor. Uh, it looked great for a little while, but one winter and it's, it's pretty knackered now. So my skylights, uh, there was one originally there um, in the ambulance, but it was all kind of frosted. You couldn't see out of it and stuff, and it was just clicking up a little bit for air. So I took that out, panelled it in, and put my own proper camper one in. Uh, and it was still a little bit dark in here, so I ended up getting another one. Um, angle grinding a big hole out of my roof there and fitting a skylight over my bed. The build process took me about a year and a few months, about a year and two months. Um, the actual building of the, the box itself was pretty easy. The bit I really struggled with was the electrics. Um, the electrics were built to be an ambulance and it didn't want to be anything else. Uh, so I've had things blow up, I've had things just conk out and one by one I've slowly changed it for genuine camper parts. Um, so my advice to anyone who had thought I'd buy an ambulance, rip the electrics out. It's, it's not worth trying to adapt it to what you want. How have you been finding van life since you've been away and how long have you been away for? I've been on the road two months now and it's been brilliant. Um, it's quite a learning curve. Um, simple things like washing clothes, finding water sources and stuff. That was something I had to kind of really um, kind of just figure out as I went along. Yeah. Like what made you kind of go on the road? What started this? Uh, well, I, I did the, the standard nine to five job, house, cars and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I just, there was something missing, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. Um, yeah. I had quite a few stressful situations in my life and I just thought, you know what, before I get too old and I, you know, I can't go out and do the things I want to do in retirement, um, I'll just build my van on a budget and do it now, see the world. Where have you been so far? So, so far it was the test runs in Wales and Scotland and yeah. then I came over to um, France, to Portugal, through Spain. Uh, spent a bit of time in Portugal and now I've just been making my way back up to Spain oh, to, um, to Italy, France nice. and Italy. That's yeah. no, really nice, it's, such a, it's a big space you get in a, in a it's so nice wide, wide and yeah. so boxy, yeah. it gives you a lot, a lot you can do with it, it makes it more of like a living space. Than yeah, a, being a box you know, like as well, a, it was exactly. really, really easy. Um, the main thing I've noticed is just the pace, the pace of life is a lot slower. Um, the first few weeks I was waking up like, right, I need to do this, I need to do that, um, just what do I need to do? And then slowly I realised you don't really need to do much stuff. And it's, it's, <laughs> that's the best bit for me. Is yeah, yeah. I do three things maybe in a day: go out, and get some wood, or uh, take the dog for a walk and stuff yeah. like that. Cook some, you know, take my time and cook some good food. Nice. And I never used to do that at home. It was just rush, rush, rush all the time. Like I've got to get to work, I've got to do this. So it's the, the pace of life is just fantastic. You feel better. I feel loads better. Yeah, I do yeah. a lot more exercise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get to see beautiful sights every day out the window. You know, just. On, on a dog walk. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. Has it changed your perception about the world or anything and just like changing your life so radically? Has, has that had any impact on you in that way? Yeah, it's, it's mainly the faith in humanity. Um, <laughs> yeah. When I was in England, I, I come across some pretty horrible people, you know, as yeah. everybody does. And I just got into this kind of rut where I was thinking, oh, it's just what's the point kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then coming out here, I've met so many amazing people, like bumping into you in the supermarket. That's pretty it's like random. Really <laughs> random. Everybody has yeah. been lovely. I've not watched. community. Won. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's really kind of restored my faith and like there are nice people out there that are really, you know, everywhere. That's awesome. That's really cool.